Hi everyone, my name is Ron Guth and I'd like to welcome you to the channel. Today I have a very interesting and hopefully very helpful way for you to take images of a obverse and a reverse, separate images, and go ahead and join them together so that you see this image here on the left that shows both the obverse and the reverse in the same image. The reason that this is helpful is because if you are gathering images for whatever reason, for a database, for plate matching, for provenance research, which I do a lot, or if you're putting together images for eBay, it's really nice to have a classy looking front and reverse of, of a particular coin. It's also useful because if you're storing images separately, obverse here and reverse there, uh, sometimes they get mixed up or they get separated and you don't know what goes with what. So it's a good idea to just join the images together and there's no question as to whether or not they belong together. The photo editing program I use is called Paint.net. Right here you can see it's the Paint.net 5.0.1 version. That's the latest version. It is a free editing program. I've used it for years. It's fabulous. It's very easy to use. It, it takes very little learning curve. It's not like a high-end software editing program, image editing program like the Photoshop. I've found it to be very excellent for what I do, which is mostly joining images together. I don't do a lot of you know color correction or anything like that. On the right side, you have the Heritage Auctions website. Now, I use them quite frequently because they have a tremendous database of images, auction prices realized, auction descriptions, and they, they have very good quality images, and they are also large images. Back in 1999, when I started CoinFacts, which is now PCGS CoinFacts, we had uh, an issue of storage. Uh, we could not have a lot of large images because there simply wasn't a place to put them unless you wanted to pay a lot of money uh, to store them. Back then, uh, the images on CoinFacts were 300 pixels across, which by today's standards is just simply puny, but by those standards it was absolutely luxurious. The price of storage has gone down dramatically, and fortunately the uh, image sizes have gone up dramatically. So if you're doing plate matching, uh, comparing images of coins to see if they match, the newer, larger sized digital images are just superb. And so it's... Um, very encouraging. Uh, it's been a very enjoyable experience over the years to see our industry evolve and how uh, people like Heritage, auction houses like Heritage, have taken advantage of the technology and have really run with it. So I use Heritage a lot. I recommend them. I'm not being promoted by them. Uh, there's no paid promotion or anything. I just like them and I use them a lot, so I recommend them. Other good houses are Stax Bowers, Goldbergs, Scotsman has some good auctions, um, great collections, uh, you name it. Most of the auction houses today, oh, don't forget Legend, Legend Rare Coin Auctions, most of the auction houses today have very good images. They either have their own in-house photography or they'll use uh, PCGS TrueView, and now NGC has their own uh, service that they call PhotoVision. So uh, as researchers, our lives have been made tremendously easier by the advances in technology. So how do we join two images together? If you look at the Heritage website, we have options. We can choose the raw obverse, the raw reverse. These are photographs that were imaged by Heritage. And here we have the NGC version of the same coin. And we have the obverse, the reverse, and then we also have the slabs showing the front and the back. So which one, the, the one we want to save is the one that we think is the best representative of what the coin actually looks like. This is a little bright. Uh, it's, it's also not very close up. Here is a coin that has, in my estimation, a good... Uh, good detail. I mean, you can see all the little nicks and the scratches, bag marks, whatever. You can see the proof-like areas around the stars where the star actually protects it from circulation. On the back of it, we have a similar thing. The protected areas are proof-like. 
and then you see the circulation uh, or wear inside the fields. Now, when you look at the, the NGC photograph, uh, this is a good photograph. It shows a little bit of color here. Uh, it shows this mark here, but if you look at a, if you look at a ten dollar gold piece, it's going to look more like this coin on the left than it is the coin on the right. So in this case, I'm going to choose the raw coin obverse and reverse. Now stay away from the slab and the um, NGC version. Now this is not always the case. Sometimes the NGC version will be better, or the PCGS version will be better, or there'll be a great image of the slab that is actually a truer image than any of the other raw images. So it just depends on your personal preference and what's available. Uh, always try to get the best possible picture so that um, you're getting the best representation of what the coin actually looks like. Okay, so how do we start? The nice thing about Heritage, and, and this goes to the advances in technology, is if you click on this image, you get a much larger image. Now, when you're doing plate matching, an image of this size is crucial because you're looking for marks that are similar from coin to coin. And here you can see all these little bag marks. I'm moving the cursor around to show them there's a little scratch or toning spot. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, you have a little mark on the rim here. So these marks are all useful for saying that, yes, this coin is the same one that appeared five years ago or 50 years ago. The better the image, the better you have an opportunity to make those kind of matches. So I like the biggest image I can. Now let's find out how big this image actually is. If you right click on it, hit copy image, and then drag it over here to paint.net, go to the edit tab, and go down to paste into new image. And there it is. See, it's the same image. You've got your copyright line down here. And I recommend keeping the copyright line because it's the same thing as joining two coins together. You want to make sure that the copyright line stays with the picture uh, for future reference. So where did this picture come from? You want to give proper credit to the producer. And Obviously, it's best to get permission from the company, but absent that, you can use the credit line down here to say, yes, this is not my image. It is a copyrighted image that came from Heritage. So we, we captured the obverse. Now let's go back and get the reverse. You, you click on the reverse at the bottom there, and this is already blown up. We're going to copy this image, and we're going to add it over here. Unfortunately, paint.net does not allow you to have images side by side in their little canvas area here, but up top you can see, okay, you can just click between the two. Now one thing you want to do before you join the images, you want to make sure they are oriented properly. Sometimes the coins get rotated uh, quite a bit, and the way that you would uh, rotate these is you would go to layer, hit rotate zoom, and I'd move this out of the way so you can see what you're doing. And, and this little thing right here, this globe, you can just, it's very sensitive when you're close to it. So if you just click on it and then move, keep your finger on your mouse and move it out here, you can see where you can just move this thing around and you can really fine tune it. Now I like the orientation that it was already in, so I'm gonna say cancel. So we're not gonna do any orienting there. Same thing here. You know, I might say, well, usually I use these balls down here to orient them. Let's say they should be on a horizontal line. So let's go ahead and rotate this one just for illustration purposes. Move it out. I click on this little line here, and I move them around until they look like they're fairly level, the balls. And then you can check that by moving your box over there. And this, if you look at the corner, yeah, they're almost perfect. So we hit OK on that. So you can see we rotated it a fair amount. Let's also look at the image size, because when you join images together to get this, the obverse has to be a certain height, and the reverse has to match that height. Otherwise, you'll cut off some of this coin or it'll be way too small for this um, uh, for the stitching. So what we do is we go to the image size and we see that this one is 2325 pixels high 
and it is 20.7 megapixels in size. Um, I'm sorry, megabytes in size. So that's a fairly large image. And again, I refer you back to the early uh, days of CoinFax when our images were 300 pixels wide. That's This is seven to eight times as large, so that's got a, a lot of data that we want to um, save, and we're just happy we have that much data. So we got 2,325 pixels high. Let's look at the reverse, and this is going to be 2,309. So this is too small, and we need to make the obverse the same size. You always go by the smallest one. If you try to stretch out a smaller image, it tends to pixelate, and you don't want to do that. So always work off of the smaller image. This is 2309, and in this case, we're going to make this one 2309. Make sure that your maintain aspect ratio box is checked, otherwise it will make the coin oval if you change it too much in size. This way, if you notice, it, it was 2325, and the, the width was 2333. When I changed this to 2309 to match the reverse, watch what happens to the width. It changes it to 2313. So now we have an obverse that's the same height as the reverse. Now one other thing that you need to be aware of before you change the sizes is, is make sure that the coin is in the same position within this box on both the obverse and the reverse that the uh, edge here is near the, near the edge of the box. The rim of the coin is above the credit line here in the same position. And if you look at the obverse and reverse, yeah, it's touching here. Same thing down here. Now, since we rotated it, this um, line here is going to be messed up. But I'll give you techniques on how to fix that sort of thing later on in another video. Now we have two images that are the same height, so how do we stitch them together? What we want to do is we want to take the obverse and we want to make this white box that this image is sitting in, we want to make that box twice as wide, at least twice as wide, so that we can drop the reverse into it. The way we do that is we go to the canvas size and here we have 2317 as the width. Now again, we want to make this more than twice that size. So 2317 would be 4634. Let's make it 5000, which would be more than we need. The other thing you want to do is uh, make sure you do not click the maintain aspect ratio here because uh, that way you would not be pushing the box out. We want, we want the box to be sh uh, stretched all the way out so that we can fit the reverse in. The other thing you want to do is make sure that this little representation of the picture is on the left center with the arrow pointing to the right. That means we're going to push the canvas out or this white box out twice as much. We're going to stretch it out to 5,000 pixels and keep the obverse in the left side of the picture. So if I click OK, this is what it looks like. This image is now 5,000 pixels wide whereas before it was 2,317. Now that we have that, we can go ahead and copy the, um, the reverse image. We do that by selecting it. We're using this select tool here, this little arrowhead. And when you have this moving dotted line here, it's OK to go up here and hit Copy. And then we can go back to this one here and hit Paste. And you'll see that we now have pasted that image into this box. Now, what happened to the obverse? Well, the obverse image is actually underneath this one. And you can see that by just click and drag on the reverse. And you can see up oh, there's, the there's the obverse. We're going to slide the reverse over to until we get, there's no, no more overlap. They don't have to be really close. but and then, then we also want to make sure that the top and bottom of this are properly oriented. Okay, so now we have both coins centered in here. And what we want to do now is escape out of this. You hit the escape button and that gets rid of that moving white line, dotted line. And now we want to go to the rectangular select tool and we're just basically going to cut out 
what we want. I'm going to move it out here to the edge and drop it. it. stays in place. We can move our cursor and then we go up to the crop tool, which is right here. See it says crop to selection. Crop it and there we go. So now we have the almost the exact same thing. This is the original picture that I showed you and this is the one that has the rotated reverse. So let's say we want to go back over here now and we'll close this and let's say we want to uh, do the slab. We'll do the same thing with a slab. The technique is exactly the same. We'll click on it, blow it up to the largest possible size and we will copy the image move it over here, paste it into the new image, and then we'll go ahead and do the same thing for the reverse. Here it is down here, and now we have that. Okay, so if, you, if you're going to crop, do it now, and the way that you would do that is you use your move selected pixels, you highlight it till you get your little moving dotted line, and, and you can use your arrow keys. I'm going to use the left arrow key and just sort of push it over till I get right to the edge. And I mean, you can really fine tune this, especially on a large image. So I'm going to go ahead and crop it there. And let's move it up with the up arrow key and then move it to the right. You can do two directions on the same time. You can't do more than two. And then I'm going to go ahead and crop that. So that looks good. Let's go ahead and do the same thing over here. I'm going to go to the left arrow key knock it over. Now go to the up arrow key, knock it up, and then we'll do the right arrow key. I'm going to leave the bottom alone. Now again, to join the obverse and the reverse, they have to be the same height. This one is 2982. This one is 2983. So they're really close in size. We're going to make them exact. 2982, we'll change that. And now we're going to change the canvas size. Remember, we're going to blow it out so that we can have room to drop in the reverse. Go to canvas size. And our width is 2073, so we want to go more than double that. So let's just make it uh, 2200 times 2 is 4400. Our picture's in the right position here. Boom, there we go. Now let's go ahead and select this, get our little wavy line there, and we go to copy. And we go back to the obverse image and we the edit tab and go paste. And there we go. Remember the obverse is underneath. And we're going to move it over and just stitch them together. And then we go to our crop tool. We have to escape out of this, get rid of that wavy line, go to the crop tool, and crop it out. Okay, there we go. What if we want to join the two images by putting the raw coin at the top and the slab coin at the bottom? That way we'll have multiple images of the same coin. We would use the same technique that we used before, except now we're going in a different direction and we have images of different widths and different heights. So we've got to make sure that everything sort of matches up. We start by looking at the width. On this image, the width is 4,607. On this image, the width is 4,155. Now again, we always want to work off the smallest image. So 4,155 is the number we're going to use to change the width of the obverse. We go to resize, change it to 4155, and there we go. Now we have to blow out our canvas. We have to expand the canvas downward so that we can have an area in which to put the slab image. And because they are, they are different heights, we have to add them together and make a canvas size that is bigger than those so that we can have plenty of room to put it in. In this image here, the height is 2082. Let's round that to 2100. Keep that in your mind, 2100. On this one here, the image size is 2982. Let's round that to 3000. So, so 2100 for the obverse, 3000 for the uh, slab side. 
and that gives us 5100. So that's going to be the size that we want to make the uh, canvas. We go back to this one here. We're going to go to canvas size. And this time we want to blow it out to the bottom. OK, so we put the image up here. We, it used to be over here. We're going to move it up here. And this down arrow tells us that we're going to spread the canvas out toward the, the lower side. Our height has to be 5100. Remember, 2100 plus 3000. So 5100, and let's see what happens. There we go. We have plenty of room down here now in which to put our slab image. So we're going to go here. We're going to select it using our little tool, the Move Selected Pixels tools. Get that wavy dotted line going. And we're going to hit Copy. And then we'll go back to our image here. And we'll hit Paste. And there we go. Now, remember, it's hidden the image at the top. So we just slide this down. And we get it in the proper position wherever we want to put it. And you can fine tune it, you know, with your arrow keys. I'm going to go left arrow key here to get it close. Well, apparently, it's not an exact image size there. And so that looks pretty good. I'm going to knock it down a little bit just to put some space between them. And I'm going to escape out of that so that the wavy line is gone. And now we have our final image. So we have the front of the raw coin, the reverse of the raw coin, and then the slab images down here below. So we got a lot of uh, interesting data about this one particular coin. So that's how we stitch images together. It's a fairly easy process. Paint.net is a very good, easy program to use. Practice on a couple coins. If you have some trouble with it, just go back and review the video. The steps are fairly easy. And you should be up and running in no time and be an expert photo stitcher. Uh, if you like content like this, uh, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that anytime I publish a new video, you'll get notice of it. Uh, hit the like button, and if you have any questions or comments, please put them below. I'm very good about answering comments. And be sure to come visit me on my live streams uh, Wednesday nights. I'm not going to be having one on the um, uh, next Wednesday, which would be uh, the 25th. That would be the 1st. Uh, I'll be at the Long Beach Coin Show, but I will have one uh, the week after that. I believe it's the 8th, so uh, you can look forward to that, and I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.